Hi, it's Michael Ward. I'm back with you all. I really want to just talk about where I am presently right now in my life. How am I feeling? What's going on? Well, honestly, right now I'm here in New Orleans. I took a break. I was here to see uh, Jasmine Sullivan, the hotels tour, but uh, she has COVID. So I definitely wish her a speedy recovery, but it's a good break. It's a good break for me to be out of my element, out of my room to just relax. And I love New Orleans as a city. It's so much good food and good people. And of course, good music, which I absolutely love. And right now we've got the good light that goes in and out coming uh, <laughs> from here. But where is Michael Ward presently in his life right now? I'm 35. And the funny thing is that I never thought that I would make it to be 35. And I know you're probably asking, like, what does it mean that you never thought that you would make it to be 35? So in my teens, I definitely tried to check out and take myself out because everything that I heard in life um, was telling me that I was wrong. You know, God doesn't love you. You're going to hell. And I got it from everywhere, my home, school, um, just life in general. And there were very few outlets that made me feel accepted, affirmed and appreciated. And those those moments were scarce very, very scarce for me. And uh, after living through through that period of my life, I really never thought that I would make it out of my parents' house. Um, I thought with everything that was going on and all of the fights and the arguments about my life, I never thought that I would be able to graduate and move out. And so when I did and I was grown at 17, it was like, or, or let me take that back. When I was out of my parents' house at 17, because I was definitely not grown. I was a big old kid at that point. But getting out of my parents' house and realizing that the world was so vast and so big, it was like, whoa, what do I do from here? And then being diagnosed at 19, I was like, wow, so my life is definitely going to be over because I'm 19 and all I can think about is I'm going to die. And so... I moved in a way too at 19 that necessarily wasn't me realizing that I was trying to take myself out, but I felt like I was living very, very quickly. And it had its good moments and it had its bad moments. The good moments were that I was able to really run toward my dreams and my goals and my aspirations and think that I had to do it like quick, 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 quick. Like this has to happen right now in my life. And this bottle is right here. We're going to move that for a second. <laughs> But running toward my goals and realizing like I had to move really, really quickly, really, really fast because I was on borrowed time. My life was going to be cut in short uh, or was going to be cut short. So I had to do it like then. And so I lived my life like that, like very quickly, very fast. Um, and a lot of great things happened out of that. I was able to be a published model and shoot editorials in New York and act and be on stage. Um, and really laser focus in on my dreams of uh, entertainment. I wanted to do everything that I felt like was me being fearless. I wanted to get back to this thing about being fearless and invincible and living my life in that way. And so looking up now at 35, I'm like, there is a world of possibility that lies ahead of me. Where the fuck do I go from here? Like, what do I do from here when I've been able to accomplish a lot of my dreams? And now the world is opening up to me and I'm opening myself up to the world. Back then, I wasn't able to fall in love and be married to a man. That wasn't legal. I wasn't able to have children legally with my partner at the time. So now that's a possibility. The world has slowly shifted to become a little bit more accepting to me as a black gay man. So what do I do with this now? Like, where do I go? From the person that thought I was going to check out of here at 15, then 17, and then 19, and now I'm 35 and I'm still here for a purpose and using my voice, hopefully, in a way that is meaningful and these videos will last long beyond me. And people will be able to look at them and see that this is possible. But still the question that I ask myself at 35 is what the fuck, what am I doing? In some ways I feel grown. I feel a lot growner than I did at, like I said, 17, 
But in this moment, in this space, when the world is available to me in, in a lot of ways, what do I want to do? For the longest time, I always said I didn't want to be married. I never wanted to have kids because I never wanted my kids to feel the way that I felt. And looking at my parents' marriage, I was like, wow, that is beautiful, right? Three decades of marriage. And, and I don't know if I'll be able to accomplish that. I don't want to look at my parents as an inspiration to my life, but it does give me a sense that it's possible. And right now, as my parents and my grandparents are facing their own health challenges and becoming caretakers and really looking out for one another and seeing the beauty of my grandfather and my grandmother's relationship, it does leave a longing for me to know what that's going to look like. What is my end of life going to look like? What is my end of life care going to look like? Is it possible for me to open myself up to be in love again? To... uh move past the the hurt and the cynic the cynicism that i feel a lot of times but i will say one thing that i do find very inspirational to me is i call them the babies now that i'm 35 i've crossed a certain threshold if i look at the 17 and 18 year olds like wow i remember that age i remember being that person but i look at them and i'm so inspired at their their movements, their voices, the way that they are stepping up to the plate in legislative sessions and are just really taking ownership of who they are and not letting anybody tell them who they should be and what life is supposed to be, but carving out their own path, creating jobs that never existed. And a lot of ways it's unfair because that American dream that I was sold, I'm realizing isn't possible in a lot of instances. Owning a home right now is crazy. And if I do have a partner and have kids, what does that world look like for me? So these are things I think about and I don't have all the answers. I'm giving myself space and grace not to have all the answers and to not have it all figured out. I'll continuously work on those things. And hopefully when I am older and I look back on this video and I look at my baby self at 35 and I say, you know, kids, you never really thought you never thought, even at 35, that you'd be able to live the life that I will be living when I get much older. And what would I say to Michael Jr. at 15? Mm. It's a really, really, really great question. If I could go back, you know what was funny, though, too? It's a lot of funny things for this. You know what's funny is that I look back on photos of myself and I posted a lot on my social media of me being that age of 15 with an afro and I had twists and cornrows and I was experimenting with my looks is to be fearless and still be brave. I feel as if at 15 my light was slowly dimming because I knew what was acceptable in my house. I knew what I could get away with and I knew the things that would trigger my parents to uh, to be like, uh-uh, we ain't gonna go for that. So I felt like at that, at that point at 15, um, I would tell Michael Jr. at 15 to continue to be fearless, to, to not stifle my creativity, to have an open heart still, regardless of the pain, the trauma, the relationships that don't work out and to find love within myself first. Find love first within myself because so much of that at 15 was seeking love and approval from my father and from other people. And if you said you liked me and you cared about me and you thought that I was handsome, then I loved you and I fell in love very quickly and I was all in. And I would, I would tell my 15 year old self to still hold a little bit of that, but use your intuition, baby, use it and, and have fun, have fun. Take in those moments to really look at life and have fun. And what would I tell my 35 year old self as I sit here right now is I'm proud of you. I'm so very proud that you're still here. 
that you are doing things that are meaningful and impactful, that love is possible and your heart is still open. And life is for the living. Life is for the living. While I'm here at 35, enjoy it. And I think I'm on my way. I think I'm on my way. As evidenced by me sitting here in New Orleans, I'm on my way. I'm seeing the world and I'm learning so much about myself while doing it solo. So lean into all that shit. What would you tell your 15 year old self? What would you tell yourself today? What are you standing in? I'm curious. I love these questions and I love these conversations. I'm, I'm just so thankful and grateful to, to be able to have these talks with you all. So I am about to go out and get me some crawfish etouffee. I'm about to listen to some Zydeco and Calypso. My friend got some boudin and making some gumbo for me. That's what you call friendship and love. Keeping me well fed with a smile on my face. So I hope wherever you are in the world that you are safe, that you are happy, you are whole, you have what you need. And if you don't, I hope that you're on your way of finding it and leaning into your support system. So until next time, life is for the living. I don't even want to say be good to yourself. So until next time, just remember sometimes that life is for the living. Mm -hmm.